a very good morning to all my student so the bone which you we are seeing here is known as the humerus bone it is one of the longest bone of the upper limb and uh, if you see here this is the bone of the arm region so this bone is having uh, so many features but uh, whenever we are we are dealing with the long bone it is having the upper end so this is known as the upper end and well this is known as the lower end and the middle one is known as the shaft right so upper end lower end and we have the shaft we'll see some of the features of the upper end and we'll see some of the features of lower end right so let's see I'll, i'm going to turn this bone right so this is known as the upper end so upper end we have the term known as the head so this is known as the round head which articulates with the scapula that is the glenoid fossa of the scapula to form a shoulder joint well this is known as the lesser tubercle right this is another lesser tubercle while this one is known as the greater tubercle i repeat this one is known as lesser tubercle this is known as the greater tubercle and we have the groove over here this is known as the bicipital groove also known as intertubercular sulcus then on the lateral aspect of the bicipital groove we have the lateral lip of the intertubercular sulcus and here we have the medial lip of the intertubercular sulcus then we have to know about there are three neck that is present in the upper end so those three necks are known as the surgical neck this red color margin wherever i am holding this one this entire area i repeat this entire area is known as the surgical neck this area right then we have the term known as the anatomical neck this is known as the anatomical neck okay so this margin is known as the anatomical neck and one more neck is there that is known as the the morphological neck of the the humerus so these all are the three neck what you have to mention here i repeat head the lesser tubercle the greater tubercle bicipital group lateral lip of the bicipital group medial lip of the bicipital group and we have the anatomical neck this is known as the surgical neck and one more neck that is known as the morphological neck then we have the lower end if you see this lower end we have the term known as the this side is the huge one that is known as medial epicondyle this side we have the lateral epicondyle and the round part this round is known as the capitulum while the pulley shaped structure whatever you are seeing here this is known as the trochlea right now just at the top of the the capitulum we have the fossa over here this is known as the radial fossa and and just above the the trochlea we have the peroneal fossa and on the posterior aspect we have the fossa that is known as the olecranon fossa i repeat this is known as the lateral epicondyle this is known as the medial epicondyle this is known as the capitulum this is known as the trochlea pulley shape above the capitulum we have the radial fossa above the the trochlea we have the peroneal fossa on the back side we have the olecranon fossa now we have the shaft so in the shaft we have the three borders and the three surface and we have some other features also so if you see here from the uh, lateral if you see here right so we have the the anterior border right from the lateral lip of the bicipital group and again it is forming the margin of the deltoid tuberosity this u shape area is known as the deltoid tuberosity and which runs downwards till the radial fossa that is known as the anterior border now we have the term known as medial border from the medial lip of the bicipital group right this is known as the medial border which goes and ends into the medial epicondyle so this is known as the medial border while on the lateral side we have the lateral border and lateral border can be seen below uh, in the lower part of the humerus which is forming the lateral supracondylar ridge now in the middle one 
third of the shaft we have the tuberosity that is known as the deltoid tuberosity right so we have uh, the three surface also the one which is between the anterior border and the medial border is known as the antero medial surface the one which is between the anterior border and the lateral border that is known as the antero lateral surface and the one which is on the posterior aspect that is known as the posterior surface now on the posterior surface if you see we have the groove that is known as the spiral groove so this is known as the spiral groove right so these all are the main features related with the the humerus bone now we have the attachment right but before dealing with the attachment let's see those features again i repeat see these all are the the attachment of the muscles so i repeat let's see this one this is lesser tubercle greater tubercle this is the head this constricted part is known as the anatomical the neck this one the junction between the shaft and the upper end that is known as the surgical neck right and the lower part if you see we have the the capitulum radial fossa this is known as the trochlea we have the coronoid fossa medial epicondyle while this is known as the lateral epicondyle on the posterior aspect we have the olecranon fossa now let's see the muscles attachment now the muscles which is getting inserted those all are in black color now the red color is indicating the origin of all the muscles so let's see this one in the lesser tubercle we have the insertion of the subscapulari muscle subscapularis muscle in the lateral leaf of the bicipital group we have the insertion of pectoralis major muscle so this is pectoralis major muscle and in the medial leaf of the bicipital group we have the insertion of teres major muscle and in the bicipital group that is in the middle that is known as latissimus dorsi so three muscles we can say lady between two major so pectoralis major teres major and l for lady l for latissimus dorsi which is in the bicipital group and from here the tendons of the long head of biceps also will pass as well as the ascending branch of anterior circumflex humeral artery also passes through the bicipital group now we have the greater tubercle right on the top of the greater tubercle we have the three impression upper impression middle impression and the lower impression on the upper impression we have the muscle which is inserted here is known as the supraspinatus muscle in the middle we have the infraspinatus muscles and at the lower impression we have the teres minor muscle right so these all are the attachment in the upper end of the upper end of the uh, the humerus bone then let us divide the the humerus into three parts upper one third middle one third and lower one third in the middle one third medial surface as well as in the medial border we have insertion of coracobrachialis muscle takes place so here we have the coracobrachialis and the u shaped deltoid tuberosity we have the insertion of deltoid muscle takes place right same how the anterior surface almost lower part of anterior surface of the uh, the humerus bone we have the origin of brachio brachialis muscle so this is the origin of the brachialis muscles right this portion we will see later now let's see in the posterior aspect so this groove is known as the the spiral groove this groove is known as the spiral groove so above the spiral groove we have the origin of lateral head of triceps and below the spiral groove we have the medial head, head of triceps is getting originated i repeat origin of the lateral head of triceps and here we have the origin of the medial head of triceps that is above and below the spiral groove now let's see the attachment in the lower end if you see the attachment in the lower end this is known as the medial supracondylar ridge or line this is known as the lateral supracondylar ridge or line so the muscles which is inserted here these all are known as the common flexor origin muscle and here we have the origin of common extensor origin muscle now this muscles which is getting originated from the uh, the medial aspect right we have the pronator tibis and this side the two muscles that is known as the brachio radialis and extensor carpi radialis longus so these all are the the origin insertion of the the muscles which is taking place from the the humerus bone i repeat this is known as 
द सबस्कैपुलरिस पैक्ट्रोलिस मेजर लेटिसमोस डोरसाइ टीरिस मेजर हेयर सुपराइस्पाइनेटस इन्फ्राइस्पाइनेटस एंड टीरिस माइनर दिस यू सेफ डेल्टोइड ट्यूब्रोसिटी सो हेयर द डेल्टोइड मसल्स इज गेटिंग इंसर्टेड हेयर कोरोको ब्रिकैलिस राइट दिस इज नन एज द लैटरल हेड एंड मीडियल हेड ऑफ ट्राइसिप्स सेम हाउ हेयर ब्रिकैलिस मसल्स एंड फ्रॉम द एंटर सर्फेस इफ यू सी हेयर ब्रिक्यूर रेडियलिस इस आर लॉन्गस हेयर प्रोनेटर द टेरिस this is known as the origin of common flexor origin and here we have the common extensor origin same how behind the lateral epicondyle we have the origin of ankylosing muscles also express these all are the origin and insertion right same how there are three knobs which are related with the humerus bone near the surgical neck we have the axillary knob in the radial groove also as in the spiral groove we have the nerve that is known as the radial nerve as well as profunda brachii artery now behind the medial epicondyle here this is epicond medial epicondyle we have the ulnar nerve is there right so these all are the nerve which is related with the humerus bone okay there can be damage of axillary nerve if there is supracondylar fracture there can be damage of median nerve right if there is a uh, damage of or the fracture of medial epicondyle there can be a damage of the ulnar nerve also and we have to know about the site determination keep in mind always we have to hold in such a way so that the upper end should be facing that is the round head should be facing upwards and the flat end which should be facing downwards or below and keep in mind the the head then we have greater tubercle lesser tubercle should be facing upward then medial epicondyle should be facing only in the medial aspect right and keep in mind one more thing the olecranon fossa should be facing downwards and posteriorly head should be facing the medially upwards and backwards so we can say that this is known as the left side of the humerus bone i repeat one more thing one more time that is olecranon fossa should be downwards and facing posteriorly head should be facing medially upwards and backwards right the 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 lesser tubercle and greater tubercle should be facing anteriorly right thank you